McAllister still going strongly in the closing minutes. Great run by Kevin McAllister! What a goal that is! Delivery's good, there's Hagen! Now McGrath, he scored! And Stokes on a hat-trick! Goal number three for Anthony Stokes! Oh. Austin saw off Robertson and delivered! Sibold <laughs> scores! That's the goal! That's the moment! Samuel off and running again. Is it going to be the hat-trick? You know it is! This is Falkirk Daft. Welcome to Falkirk Daft, your unofficial podcast dedicated to everything to do with the mighty Falkirk Bairns. Six wins in a row. That's right, you heard that right. Six wins in a row. Do you know the last time that happened, Ross? Uh, My space had had just been invented. Concord was still flying and Jude Bellingham was born. 2003-2004 season, it was the last time that Falkirk recorded six wins on the bounce. That's according to our uh, resident statistician, Donald Johnson, by the way. That might not be true and someone no doubt will hit me saying, that's bollocks, John. That's a, but that's a brilliant stat, but it's true though. Absolutely, uh, thank you, Donald, for that absolute stat. He's our stato of Falkirk Daft. So he gave us that. So that was it. Big one against Kelty, huge win against Kelty from this the position that we're in, but we'll get into that a wee bit later. Uh, Ross, how are you doing? Very well, mate, very well. Looking forward to the week ahead. There's lots of football coming up, so Certainly is. Yeah, excited, especially after the weekend, as you say, what a what a way to finish a game. Exactly. Big show today. Um, we're obviously going to be talking about the magnificent victory at Kelty Hearts. Uh, and we're also going to be looking ahead. We've got two games to look ahead to. We'll quickly look ahead to Alloa, which is on Tuesday. By the time somebody's listened to this podcast, you might have, that might have been gone. Massive game. Like you say, every game's a massive game. And then we're into the Cup a week on Monday against Alloa. And we'd be delighted to be joined by Darvel manager Mick Kennedy, who's going to come on and preview that game with us so it's there we go um got to say this week though however the podcast is brought to you by the Falkirk Support Society we are always going on about the Falkirk Support Society we're both paid up members we obviously have the monthly draws um but yeah just to let you know Falkirk Support Society basically is putting fans back into the heart of the club and um, like other clubs it is only made possible by all bands working together you can sign up and pay a minimum of £10 each month in a fund which will build a shareholding into the Bairns under a collective agreement held in the name of the Falkirk Support Society. Of course you know all about it already, but if you haven't, where have you been? You can get involved, right? Because by having more shares, the more say we supporters have. And you can get all the info you want on that, right? FalkirkSupporters.org. That's FalkirkSupporters.org. And we want to be, obviously be a major part of the club in the future uh, and not just leave it to the current shareholders, right? We want to bring a positive influence as supporters onto the way the club works and evolve the club and hopefully a return to the higher divisions of the Scottish Football Leagues. Um, I mean, you, you've been an advocate from day one of this, Ross. 100% mate. Um, I think it's so, so important that the, the, the fans have a voice in the boardroom um, on an ongoing basis forevermore. So the, the more fans get involved with the club, whether it be hopefully through the support society um, or if they wish, they can also do that themselves through their own accord. You just need to contact the club. Either way, it's Falkirk fans uh, buying their part of the club and the fans have been magnificent over the years back in the team both on in the stands but also in their pockets uh, especially the last few years when we've been down here and we've not really had much to say, sing and cheer about but that's hopefully those days are are, are gone and we're, we're back hopefully well you know we can get more into the Falkirk Support Society we're going to be joined our guest pundit he was on earlier in the season Stuart Adam is going to be our guest pundit he is yeah, what is Stuart's is he president of Focus Support Society? I feel we have to salute him. What's Stuart's uh, official title? Oh, I don't know if he's well president. I don't know if he's president, but he's certainly <laughs> the head honcho. We'll go ahead. The, head honcho. Ho- the big cheese of the Focus big Support cheese. Society, Stuart Adam, will be joining us to look back at the Kelly game. So we'll get into it a wee bit more with him when we speak to him later on. A few things to cover off after last week before we get into the show. Alan says, Great show as usual, but disgusted disgusted to hear producer John doesn't put his dog's name into any cards he sends. Next he'll be saying he doesn't buy a Christmas present. 
I, I'll, I'll, I'm going to hold up my hands. I do buy the dog a Christmas present. Well, that's something, John. No, I was reading a stat today. It's like three hundred million pounds or eighty million pounds. I, I can't remember what the actual figure was. Will be spent on pets for Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. That's, that's no, that's yeah. weird. That's, that's just that's a bit. Stupid. Buying your dog a Valentine's card is just um, weird. Or yeah, something for Valentine's. I'm sure there's a joke in there about yeah. it by. Buying a dog a Valentine's, but it's not, no, it's not. <laughs> not appropriate. It's 2023, <laughs> Ross, for God's sake. Uh, so, yeah, but um, I will make sure for you, Alan, I start signing the dog's name. <laughs> uh, John Mitchell has been in touch, said podcast, um, he said about heading about the ball back from the crowd. Remember, we were talking about last week that the goal yes. would be if the ball comes out, head it back. He says back in the choir days, a ball came at him. Uh, and he jumped out shouting, John's ball! I fucking love it. You don't hear that enough at <laughs> football now, do you? No, uh, you don't. And he headed it straight back at Davy Weir, so brilliant. Fair play, I'm listening. I, 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 hopefully Davy Weir gave him the credit he deserved there as well. That every football best. supporter's dream, heading the ball yeah. or passing the ball back when it comes out into the crowd. John, that's actually quite apt you said that because just like earlier today, I don't know if you saw uh, on Facebook, we had actually Gordon Robertson, who's a big listener of the podcast, he got in touch and um, he sent us the clip as well. So he headed the ball back on Saturday. Um, so he said, um, so PJ had tipped over the bar at the two minute mark and uh, he headed it back out. Super Fantastic. Nice. It's, listen, <laughs> please, if you've done this, if you've been able to head the ball back at the, the field of play once it's went out, please let us know. We we'll love that sort of stuff. One day our dreams will come true. And it will was, there not, was there not an infamous, uh, I know this is probably a little bit below the belt as a parent, but um, <laughs> do you remember back in the 90s when Stevie Kirk launched the ball into the heart set? <laughs> yes. And they, to be fair, the girl did head it back. But uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, took, it new, took her head off. Of, I, I remember all that. And it was like, because he hammered it for a queens. And there was all sorts of thing. And oh, uh, yeah. I think, uh, they, but, I think they, Falkirk did at the time. Did the Falkirk not like invite her to the next time? Yes, they did. There was all sorts of apologies made and all sorts of stuff. But mm-hmm. glad to see she's okay now, I'm, I'm sure. Well, she'll be well into her 50s probably. Now. I know. <laughs> 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 exactly. Uh, listen, Scottish Cup, we mentioned it. We're taking on Dav. Like I say, we're going to speak to Mick Kennedy in a bit. Uh, tickets on sale public today. I think the last count, the, fall, the club just messaged out there was about 75 left. Uh, they'll be gone by. I'd imagine they'll be gone by tomorrow, as in Tuesday. Gone to, yeah, I would suspect so. Expect, suspect so. Obviously, the game's on the television. I think Darvo have sent, sold out their end as well, actually. So it should be a yeah, cracking atmosphere. I think that'll be brilliant. What, I think their, their crowd, what's it, limit? Is it 2,500 or something like that? Yeah. So there you go. That'll be absolutely brilliant. And um, I know we are going to get into it, but I just, hopefully, the team will turn up. Um, because obviously Aberdeen didn't, and hope and then you know the Bairns fans are going to turn up in number as well. But we need to turn up in voice, and there's a big area there. Let's get all the young lads getting their flags and stuff, make it a bit colourful with it being on TV as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, bits and bobs and news. Um, I think it's just breaking. It's just happened there just now. John McGuinn made manager of the month for League One for January, and Callum Morrison player of the month for January. I mean, well, I, I don't think they were going to look anywhere else for that, no. were they? No, well deserved, massive. Obviously, I thought it was a nice touch as well. John getting his picture taken with the rest of the coaching team, and yeah. you can just tell that's that's his style anyway, isn't it? And um, Callum just absolutely phenomenal in terms of his goals, but his contribution has just been outstanding as well. Yeah, other news: the new Legends Initiative is set to launch. Um, this is something that's happening. Uh, they basically introduced a Legends Initiative, which will, there's details going to be released further this week. It's to make uh, this as personal as possible. Supporters, fans will be invited to propose which legends we'd like to see feature on a voting shortlist via our social media channels. Following on for this, supporters will then have the opportunity to vote on which legends they want to make the final cut. I believe this is in, there's something with the South Stand with this. I think the details have come out, but my understanding is there's something to do with the South Stand and the fact that they're going to have legends in the South Stand and you'll be able to... Oh, yeah, so yeah, I think you're right, John. I think it's, it's North Stand, so they'll be in. North so Stand, what, sorry, yeah, sorry, North Stand. What they're going to do, as far as I'm aware, is they're going to have, so there's six sections of seating. And each section will be um, branded and renamed after the legend. Um, so that sounds kind of cool. Obviously, the away end it is the away end. So I don't know how much the fans are going to see of it, uh, and unless it's like quite big graphics. But um, either way, it's a nice touch to do. 
No, absolutely. Just keep your eyes on the focus socials for that. Other news, the club's looking for a financial controller. So if you um, are into finances, you could maybe take a wee part-time role at the club, 21 hours a week. And um, so they can bring basically the finance back in-house. That's part of that. Uh, and other bits and bobs, Ross. Um, Stevie Gibson, our, our man at uh, Football Fans and Training, has been in touch. He didn't want to talk about the result against uh, Ava at Denny. Um, all he's saying was terrible and they were pumped. I squeezed them on what the result was and it was 9-2. Yeah, it's a bit of a pump in, but the, the, the boys normally do pretty well, so it's maybe just a wee one-off. They were probably a wee blip. still hungover from uh, Kelty on Saturday. Yeah, like that, exactly. And uh, the Falkirk women were playing Sunday there and it was 1-1 against Grampian ladies um, there. So Falkirk women still going really, really good as well. So um, good on all fronts at the moment, apart from yeah. Falkirk And football. I think we're going to have... Um, well, I think we've said to Stevie, and we've certainly said to, um, is it Charlie who says yeah, Charlie, yeah. Falk at women? I think both of them are going to come on to the, the podcast in the next few weeks, which will be amazing. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but listen, let's get into it. We're desperate to talk about uh, uh, the big match at the weekend. And on, like I say, to talk about Kelty away at the weekend there, it's Stuart Adam from the Falkirk Support Society. Afternoon, gentlemen. How are we? Very good, thank you, you, Stuart. We were having a debate before he came on uh, about what your official title is at the Falcon Support Society. I was just going to call you the big cheese. Ha, yeah, we called an awful lot worse at home. Um, I'm the co-chair, myself and Alan McFarlane are co-chairs of the Falcon Support Society, but only for another few weeks as the AGM's coming, coming up and I have to stand down then because I'll have served two years on the committee. So it is time for other people to come in and take care of the uh, the thing that Falkirk fans have built so successfully over the last 14 months since we formally launched. Um, it's it's great that we've proven the concept, and I just want to thank Falkirk fans for making a success of this, um, such a success of it uh, it's, since we launched. I mean, let's remember, this has never happened before at Falkirk. We're putting tens of thousands of pounds into the club. We're the fourth largest shareholder in the club overall, behind the patrons, the Rollins and Sandy Alexander. Um, well over seven and a half grand a month going into the club, uh, over 630, nearly 640 members now, I think. Nearly 9% of the club from a stand and start. That's that's pretty amazing. Um, it looks like over this financial year we'll hit 100 grand that we're putting into the club. And what that does is it doesn't just help the club stay liquid, it helps uh, fans get more and more of the club that they're going to own in perpetuity. So we're not just handing cash over to the club. Maybe a donation, as, as, as someone wisely than me put it, a, a, a kind of union sub. It's actually building something permanent so that when the bad guys next come along, and they, they will come along again because they're still chapping in the door, when they come along to try and take a club from us, we can we can fight them off. We've got a better chance of fighting them off, at least. Yeah, I mean, uh, for anyone out there, I mean, we talked about at the start of the show, uh, the Focus Support Society, uh, Stuart, but for anyone, I guess, in layman's terms, that's not heard of the Focus Support Society, what does it do and how much does it benefit the club? Fundamentally, it exists for three things. To protect the club, as I said, from predators. Now, we know it's happened twice in the last couple of years that predators are trying to take over the club for whatever the nefarious ends are. We know that there's dirty money in Scottish football. Um, we know that people use uh, football clubs for their own reasons. We don't want that to happen at Falkirk. That's the first point. Secondly, it's to promote the fans' voice within the club. Who loves a club more than we do, the Falkirk fans, all of us? Uh, no fan is above any other fan. Um, and collectively, I, I strongly believe that Falkirk fans will make the right decisions uh, for the football club if they have the control. And uh, finally, it's just to progress the club on the pitch. So by putting serious money into the club, we know that we can uh, help the club uh, improve itself. So what we do is um, ask as many fans as possible to pay what they can, if they can afford it, um, to uh, buy shares in the club. We put in six, seven thousand pounds, or near seven and a half grand a month now, into the club. Um, so collectively, fans have this big and growing pot of shares that we all own together. We've got two directors, Nigel Serafini and John Wright, who work with the other directors on the board. It's a fans board. I mean. Uh, an elected fans board now. Um, so they all work together to to work towards these aims. Um, we've done things in the past where we've held events, we've had to meet the manager events, meet the board events and things like that. And we should get on to doing more like that again. 
And we're also we're trying to think of ways that we can give a bit back. I mean, just the now infamous, um, you know, Fogart Daft uh, sort of prize draw every month, which um, my good lady wife still has to collect her beers. Um, if she ever hears about it uh, for the pre-match game. Um, <laughs> so, you know, we're, we're trying to do that um, more and more as well. Um, but fundamentally, we, fans are buying an, an idea. And the idea is that they're, they're gradually buying their club so they can protect, protect it, they can progress it, and they can promote fans' voices. Yeah. I'd just like to this moment, Stuart, obviously thank you and Alan for for the work you've done there and, you know, in everything you've, you've just said, there's a proof of why this exists and, and, you know, why it's so important going forward. So thanks, you know, for all the work you've done, because, you know, it's, it's a, it's a hard task. I mean, you develop a lot of hours and a lot of work that goes into it behind the scenes at Stuart. So just a, a big thank you for all the work you've done. And hopefully the, the next chair is as successful as you and Alan have been. Well, thank you very much. No, it's, it's, it's a pleasure really. I mean, you know, I was never going to play for Falkirk or, or, you know, it's a beautiful and never mind real football. I'm so still holding out. I'll be honest with you, Stuart. I'm still holding out for a game. Well, you're about 15 years younger than me and, <laughs> uh, you know, about the same amount of uh, stone anyway. So, uh, I bet you guys are. So, I mean, it's just, if any, anyone does a little bit that they can. And I, I just want to add as well, I mean, the amount of people that have signed up and put money forward. I mean, we know that we're doing this in the back of COVID. We're doing it in the back of this horrendous cash crisis that's hitting everyone just now. So, Every penny counts, and we genuinely thank you for the bottom of your heart. Nothing's expected of people. People are doing this voluntarily, yeah. um, and I, that's really important. I've got pals who are on minimum wage and on benefits who are taking part in this, and, I, and it's really humbling to see that. I mean, mm -hmm. their tenor's worth more than my tenor in that respect. So uh, so that's wonderful. Of course, we want as many more to join as possible. That's the, the way we can make it more democratic. We can make it more transparent. We can achieve much more. But... I want to focus on thanking those that have already uh, participated so far. And how do people get involved, Stuart? You can, I mean, quite simply go onto our website, falkersupporters.org, um, and there's the join subscription page, and that gives you different ways to do it. You can either sign up via PayPal, which is the, sort of the, the easiest um, interface to do it, or you can set up a standing order if you want to control it through your own uh, internet banking. If you don't have any of that, you can give us a shout and we'll get a, a standing order mandate to you as well. As I say, we've got the elections coming up quite soon. We've got the AGM coming up in um, March. If you, the, the, the deadline for participating in that election, either as a, a member voting on the committee or um, as a, you know, the stand for election uh, is the 10th of February. So we'd urge anyone who's interested to join before then if they could. Um, and again, so, so we'll run that election over the coming weeks uh, over that and it'll, there'll be more online about that. Yeah, we'll look forward. Well, so I might talk a wee bit more about it um, a bit later on and, you know, the future for the uh, Focus Support Society and, and what more they can be done. But first, let's talk about that game on Saturday. Um, Kelty won, Falkirk 2, 1-0 down with 15 minutes to go and we pulled the rabbit out of the hat. What did you boys make of it? It's just... I know I said this last week, John, about any win will do, and any win will do, but, um, yeah, I don't know if I want another, how many games have we got left? Another 14 games or something? I don't know if I could do another 14. It's going to be worse, it's going to get worse, isn't it? It's going to get worse and worse. But what a, what an ending to a game, and it sets us up now nicely. We've got a big week ahead, as we mentioned, and, uh, and it just shows you the difference between finishing a game like that and then coming into a double, a big double header versus losing the game everybody's a bit down because it's Kelty for the third time but it's not we we finally broke that duck and yeah we can we can start to kind of feel good and look ahead again were you worried Stuart um when we went one nil bearing in mind the the record we've had against Kelty this season or were you were you quite calm about it no I was terrified <laughs> um and the more the game went on the more I thought they were out muscling us um I mean I said they're a decent side Kelty Let's not take it away from them. You know, there's a lot of stuff on a junior team. No, no, no. They're a, they're a big, experienced side. I um, mean, you know, Higginbotham, you've got Aggieman, who's excellent, who stays on his feet. You've got Tam Aware, or wasn't very aware when, um, you know, when Ruman jumped in front of him. But still, I mean, you've got some <laughs> some pretty decent players in there. And they had the measure of us 
for the first two games, they beat us fair and square in the first two games. They had the measures for a lot of the game on Saturday. So for us to fight back the way we did, and yet again, you've you've got people saying, I've lost count of the amount of times this season we've said, last season's team would have folded. They would have. Yeah. This, this team doesn't know when they're beat. And that must be starting to cause a few sort of nervous sort of flutters up East Endway. I mean, and the other thing is, we're seeing more and more and more um, how John McGlynn and Paul Smith can turn the game with their substitutes. I mean, the- I mean that that's something, you know, we'll, we'll get into it a wee bit later, but something we've not had, I guess, in previous seasons. Um, you know, that changed the game. Totally. I mean, that's something we've not had in previous seasons, I guess, is that depth of bench for, for players to come on and change. Because in previous seasons, you were looking over the bench and going, Christ, we've not got a match winner on there. But then you look at the substitutions he made and he brought on Allen, Wright and Burrow. You know, we went a bit more direct there. And, I mean, obviously, the two subs come on and, and get the goals. Um, unchanged, um, unsurprising, I guess, from... Uh, last couple of weeks, Ross, uh, you were, I guess, the only thing you would have said is who would you have liked to have seen out the side? Who would you have liked to have seen and come in? Yeah, I know, but uh, you know, I think we've we talked about this. In fact, we've talked about this the last so many so many episodes, John. It's he's not gonna, he's probably not gonna change a, a winning team, and I can understand it. I do, I can completely understand it. It's, I do still think, and and he knows way, he knows he's lost information about football than I'll ever know but I do sometimes wonder if we sometimes should be tweaking depending on what we're facing because Mm -hmm. for first half and the most we lost the midfield battle again um, which isn't too dissimilar to the previous games against Kelty as well and I just think do we need to tweak, do we need to tailor how we're doing it don't get me wrong as you've already said the subs came on and what a difference they've made and it shows having that strong bench there that you can actually do that now yeah, um, it was a relatively bright start. But as Stuart said, Kelly quickly got a kind of measure of us, and, and you know they set up really well, and that's something they've done very tactically well over the season against us. Set up, up, they know how to set up against us. So we were kind of we started bright, but you know, more as the game progressed, the more and more they got into. It. I think PJ Morrison, you know, shout out to PJ Morrison. He's really coming to the side and started to make that number one jersey his own. You know, we look at we brought in Brian Kinnear from West Ham, obviously, but he's not really had a you know a nod at the jersey yet because of PJ's form. Great save from Robbie Leach, really cracking save from Robbie Leach, and he has seems to have a command of his box as well. Yeah, cracking keeper. Um, I mean, I think. <sighs> I think some fans thought he, he was a bit slow off the mark when he came back from injury, and he, he'd probably say that himself. He liked a bit of confidence, but yeah, that that save on Saturday that kept us in the game. Um, it was like, you know, that, what's his name, the England keeper from '66. I forget his name. Um, the, the one he, yeah, Gordon, yeah Gordon, Banks. The Gordon Banks. Gordon Banks. Yeah, that, it was sort of akin to the save from. Uh, when they played, played against Brazil, which is held up as the best save ever, right? maybe they didn't dive quite as far, but um, but yeah, yeah, the guy he's, he's playing at the top of his game, and you've got to after a long period of injury, and he's a young lad, so just take my hat off to him. No. I, I I agree, Stuart. I think yeah, I was obviously a few weeks back saying no, he probably should be making way for if you're not going to bring someone up from West Ham and not play them, but. I can understand the logic of not dropping him if he's not if he's if he's playing well and we're not really conceding a lot of goals. Yeah, I think uh, Kinnear will have to wait his turn by the looks of it. Um, we obviously go one 0 down in a shock horror. It was Callum Higginbottom. Um, you can honestly that was, he's a wee shite. Yes, he's um, that's exactly what it is. I mean, him and Cardo in the same team. It's just like oh god, um, that's what made it so sweet of a victory. Um, See, just before you go, did you notice we Robbie Leach as well, who was like a nothing player for Falkirk, giving it that on Saturday as well? Oh, was he? Was Robbie Leach giving it that? I know. Aye, he was giving it the big end, so he's another one that's on the hit list. I mean, the, the, it was, again, we talked early in the season about this, losing goals from corners, Ross, and losing goals from cross balls. It was another one of those, poor defending from the corner. Um We seem to have sorted that out, but is it something that you're worried it'll creep back in now? It's. I hope not, but I I still think 
I, I do think we miss Donaldson when he's not playing. Like I know we've done well the last few games when he's been up, when he's been out, um, and obviously he was back on the bench there and got a couple of minutes. But I do think we look better defensively with him in there. If I'm being honest, who would your first two starting centre halves be, Stuart? If 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 everyone is fit, who would you have in there as, as your two? God, that's a, that's a tough one. I mean, uh, yeah, it, it, Donaldson would certainly be one of them. I'd say. Mm-hmm. Um, I I find it really difficult to criticize. I don't like criticizing players anyway. That's how I'm made up. But um, I find it hard to say who should or shouldn't be in. I mean, Brad Mackay and Mackie have been a, almost like a, a reserve centre back pair, and they've came in and done brilliant. And I want to shout out um, Brad Mackay actually because he was the weapon boy last season. You know, he was a sort of poster boy of a sort of second worst season in 150 years. Um, but this season he, he's uh, he's absolutely fought back. What character he's shown! Yeah. Um, and I think he deserves all the plaudits. If there's a, a most improved player award or something if that's not too patronising uh, at the end of the season, then I think he's he, he deserves it. Yeah, he, he's he's been really, really good and big and strong. We're talking talking about how important he could be against someone like Connor Salmon when when we play Alloy, you know, because he's got that strength and in this league. Certainly that kind of shines through when you're playing against these big, tough, physical teams. Um, 1-0 down then. Um, we had a big penalty shout from Agumin. Uh, we're playing Rao, um, taking him down the box. Did, you get, did we get away with that one, do you think? Or was it, you, put, you guys thinking it's a dive? I'd seen them given. <laughs> Stuart? <I've> seen... <laughs> Look, we're not getting any penalties, so I'm not going to concede that we should we should even <laughs> give any, even if it's going well. And frankly, I couldn't see the rain was just too bad anyway. Yeah, it, it, I thought we got away with one with that one. When I look back at it, I thought mm, we've got away with that. Argument it, is John, it wouldn't have shocked me if we yeah. if he'd given the penalty right. But as Stuart said, we've, we're due a bit of luck because we've had almost nothing from the the officials this season. So if if it means that we get away with something, we deserve it. I mean, there was the boys that actually shouts. You know, I don't think overly there was a lot of criticism aimed at the officials. By the way, it was Mike Roncon or Roncon on Saturday there. Um, certainly, people asking if it was actually a corner for their goal. I don't know if it was or not. I wouldn't want to make a call on that, but maybe people neither could have called it. But there wasn't too many. Well, the TV camera it? couldn't get down the down the <laughs> <touchline, so. laughs> Absolutely. Um, so. Kelly obviously had their chance at 1-0, big penalty shot, like I say. So uh, it was a kind of, you know, they come out in the second half, games raised a wee bit more. We started to almost figure them out, and you could see that as the kind of half progressed. They started to figure them out a wee bit more. Obviously, the substitutes come on, um, Jordan Allen, uh, Burrell, uh, coming on at 60 minutes along with uh, Matthew Wright as well. Um, they made a huge difference, didn't they, when we went, we changed the system. Uh, no, they did. I thought the the subs, as as they have done most of the season with McGlynn, I thought the subs worked brilliantly. Um, if you think back to this, the last game with Kelly, the subs made a big difference at halftime. Remember when he brought them on? Obviously, we just wasn't quite enough that day. But Saturday, it worked a treat. And um, I, I like it. I like it being a bit more direct. I know we are direct and we've got a formation that sets us up to make chances and stuff. But actually, see when you see a, like two or three decent proper out-and-out strikers on the park, what a difference I think that makes. See, this is, this is an important point, that we've got a strong bench, we've got a strong squad, right? It's not a huge squad. Don't let no. anyone fool you. We've got several players out on loan and a couple of folk are, are long-term injuries and a couple of them are youngsters, all that sort of thing. But it's a, a well-balanced squad and it's, it's got some depth in it. And that's important. It's important that we've invested in that um, because that is a risk, because we know we're skinny. But we've invested in the squad uh, because we, you know, we're pushing to win the win the league. And Fenland don't have that squad, right? They're they're only one or two injuries away from, you know, from the from the bottles crashing. I hope. Well, uh, but you know, we're we've now even if we don't win the league, we know that we've we've got a, a strong squad and we're flying into these playoffs. I think that's that, that's where I take my hat off to everyone who made the decisions to first of all expand the squad at the start of the season and secondly for the incredible work that John and it's incredible work that John McGlynn's done uh, in in that window there I mean the January window is usually crap you know it's slim pickings but look what he's done he's managed to move on quite a lot of players he's managed to bring in several players I can't point to one player 
in both the two windows that he's had so far that you'd call a failure. Yeah. You know, a couple might you want to see a little bit more from, but there isn't anyone who stands out as a failure. And that's that's unheard of. I, I totally agree, Stuart. And that's um, as you were talking, that's what was can I gonna be my next point as well. I couldn't I genuinely couldn't think of someone who you go, Oh, I wish I hadn't signed them. Yeah. yeah. Plus he's getting more. He's getting more out of these players. We mentioned Brad Mackay. Look at McCann. Uh, look at Morrison. You know, and several others. Nesbitt. You know, well. Half of the team from last season, everybody would have been happy emptying, frankly. You know, I mean, yeah. they were ripped up and start again if we were given the choice. But he's actually getting more and more out of these players as well. So yes. that's, you know, let's yeah. enjoy this while we've got it. Absolutely. And uh, two of his uh, signings, Jordan Allen and Roman Burrow, uh, combining for that goal. Good header from Burrow and I don't know what part of Jordan now went in off of. Um, the goal was his though um, and off the mark obviously uh, as a Falkirk player as well. I think he's going to, he's the player I think we've been looking for. Um, that guy that's going to be in the box. You could see from his goal he's just in the right place at the right time and been crying out. The amount of balls that whizzed across that box from Kennedy yeah. and Morrison all season. I think we're going to have a striker there now in Allen that is going to be there to put the ball in the back of the net like he did with his goal on Saturday. And again, great header from Burrow um, on to him. Uh, do you know, John, it's like a, it's like I'm going back to Alan, it's the John Baird type that we, we talk about and it looks like he's going to have the work rate to go with it as well. Yeah, right place, right time, good header from Burrow, he's got a good neck on him, he knows how he can yeah, twist yeah. his body, get the, get the header on target um, and it was, it was whether it would have went in as a header, I don't know, but it was certainly on target. And then, as you say, we Jordan Allen there, right place, right time. I think he's going to get, I could see him, even though he's only here now, well, he's got, what, three three full months, I could see him hitting 10 goals, even in that short period of the time. I really could. Big prediction, big prediction. So, 1-1 one, one it goes, um, and then, the, you know, the Rockets, the heads go up, we're out for the win. Um, did everyone, okay. however, shake themselves when Joe Cardo went through at 1-1? One, one? Oh, man. <laughs> now it had to be Joe Cardo as well. Oh, yeah. My oh, sitting room was like Jimmy Bartle's cell. It was awful. So... I know, but luckily we got to chill with that one. Good defending and, and match it. So then, you know, you're looking at the quads, you're looking at the clock, the heads are up. And it's something that we have not done often enough as Falkirk, you know, certainly over the last few seasons, is dig out, you know, it kind of harks back to the host era when we used to get those last minute winners. And yeah. But it was just, what a reaction um, when it went 2-1. Let's talk through the goal. Great ball from McCann. What a touch from Burrow to shift it onto his right foot for that strike. And it was just a fantastic goal um, all around. And scenes. This is just scenes. There is, uh, there's not much better than a last minute goal, I don't no. think. Like, there's not much better. And um, and I know our wives and stuff aren't uh, around, but still, there's not much better than a, a last minute goal. <laughs> <laughs> you do. You do. I hope Gillian doesn't hear this episode, Ross. <laughs> yeah, no, and our dad doesn't watch it. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but no, I think, um, as you said, John, the ball in, like McCann's distribution has been outstanding this season. Um, he's obviously popped up with a couple of goals as well, but fantastic cross in. Um, the touch from Burrow just gets better every time you watch it. And I'm, I think I've watched his goal back like 40 times since uh, since Saturday. And it's just an absolutely beautiful touch. And it was, it was only going one place. And you just, like, you know how we, they, they talk about these limbs moment when you actually see behind the goals and under the enclosure and stuff. It just went absolutely bananas. Brilliant. I know. It's, you, you were watching it on Falkirk TV. What was your reaction in the house? Oh, yeah. I mean, I just, uh, everything got spilt. I, I, the noise was appalling. I had to po- apologise to the neighbours. No, it was... <laughs> It was brilliant. I mean, it's I, I stopped believing, you know, with the, before the first goal went in. I thought, that's it. You know, they, they've got the, the, the sign over us. But no, um, it's no better with this team now. They don't know when they're beat. We know we've got the quality. And that's the thing. There's a big debate on whether or not we should play Burrow from the start. You know, I get it. You know, he, yeah. what does he have to do to earn his place? However, look what he does when he comes on. He scores. But the other thing I just want to say, I mean, you mentioned McCann, the quality of crossing from all over the team, whether it's Blaine Rowe from when he first came in, even, I mean, you know, Morrison, who has been criticised for his sometimes wayward crosses, he's putting in some great balls as well. McCann constantly. We're getting the the, the balls into the box, yeah. and that's when you're going to win games. Um, but, yeah, I mean, 
Burroughs touch and the way he put it away with a bit of class, you know, that was yeah, that was nice. It was. I was yeah. asking my son, um, when I because I saw on, on the camera a couple of bodies getting onto the pitch from um behind the goals, and I thought, hang on, that'll be him. And it wasn't <laughs> apparently there's no I, now my son's what 21, nearly 22, um, and he knocks about with what's commonly been known as the young team. But apparently now there's a young, young team um of sort of 15 and 16 year olds coming through as well, and it was them. So if anyone from the local constabulary is watching, it wasn't my son. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I mean, what a feeling. We talked about Donald's stat, six wins in a row. The first time it's been done since 2003, 2004. Um, someone will pick us up on that, no doubt. But that's the stat, or Donald or stat will come up with that. Um, shouts for the Roman bar to be turned into the rum arm bar as well. Um, and I've got to say... Falkirk Football Club, absolute banter thieves. They've still stole our borough uh, collection banter. I have done, I noticed that as well. I know, so yeah. Falkirk Football Club, be ashamed for being banter thieves. <laughs> um, but, um, I mean, the big question there's Jordan Allen getting a go. There's Burrow getting a go. Who, who, do, nice who, do, you, who do you start? I mean, Burrow, with, as Stuart said, coming off the bench, assist and a goal there at the weekend. Two goals coming off the bench in previous uh, games. Gary Oliver, we know John McGlynn is very, very, in all the interviews he does, pushes Gary Oliver. He's work great, how hard he works. And you can see that. You can see that. But you just go, does Burrow start? Does Jordan Allen start? And I mean, yeah. who in that race, who starts? Burrow or Jordan Allen? We've spent money on Jordan Allen. He's the new signing. Um, like we say, fox in the box, Burrow, you know, like you say, Ross, good in the air, change of pace, great finish on him. Yeah. You know, it's tough, John, it is, it's tough. I think, I, I, and how I think it will go, I think Oliver will, will keep his place until something dramatic happens. But then I don't want something dramatic to happen, like as in a loss or for Oliver to come up, like for him to break his leg or something. I don't want anything bad to happen. Yeah. But, um, it looks and feels like Oliver will continue to play in that role, and I'm I'm kind of on board with it more now. Like I know I wasn't, I, like I wasn't in the Oliver camp, but I can see I can see what John's doing with him, and he is working really really hard. I don't disagree with. You. I think Jordan Allen could be a a similar type of player that will run the defense ragged, but maybe with more chance of him getting a goal than Oliver. So I can understand the shout for for Jordan Allen to come in and do that job. Um, but it's just brilliant to have all these options. And then you've got the, the big lad right as well, who I think could be a bit of a nuisance um, if it, when he gets a bit more game time as well. Where do you sit on it, Stuart? Yeah, I mean, uh, okay, well, yeah, I know compared to John McLean, but um, I, it's le- I think it's less about individual players and, you know, one at a time, who do you want to play? I mean, of course you want to play Roman Burrow because he's exciting, you know? Of course you want to play Alan because you've got goals in him. But it has to work as a unit. And we beat teams one or two ways this season. We either overrun them at the start of the game and coast out the game, or we fight until they're knackered and then overrun them at the end of the game or grab a last-minute winner, right? And if it's the latter, then that's where Gary Oliver's coming in because he's the one that's holding the ball up. He's bringing the other players into it once we're running the midfield battles. So I I kind of, you know... I get it, um, but it's going to be horses for courses. Like tomorrow night, um, or tonight, I'm not entirely sure. It depends when this goes out. Um, the the Alloa game. I mean, Connor Salmon's going to score against us. We know that. Let's just put that one in the bank just now. So, who's going to score our two, and when is it going to happen? That's you know, that's kind of where the debate is just now. But I can, I can see all of us a valuable footballer, and you know, I, I, again, easy to say. Let's play one of our now three or four other strikers, but he's he's doing the business. Do you not think we should just go like some crazy formation? Just go like three, three, play four, all four three, of them, or something. Just play all of them. Just like you know, like did you see that interview with um, uh, Hendo and the Falkirk Herald last week? He says the difference between Joe McGlynn and Dick Campbell is Dick Campbell would just go, oh, just just go out and do your best, and we'll see what happens. I actually think John McGlynn just at some point needs to go, just go play, go and see what happens, and like just shove oil in up front. <laughs> <laughs> Good, uh, interesting table that Ross has found is that points from losing positions in, in League One, Falkirk are 13 points um, from losing positions. Three wins and four draws uh, scraped out of losing positions. Look at down that table, Dunfermline have only got nine points. 
uh, compared to Falkirk, and that's one win in six draws that they've had from losing positions as well. See that that and that is like I think we've we've worried about Dunfermline in the respects of they have pulled a lot of defeats back, but they have only they've only pulled them back to draw. Like they've not really turned a loss into a win. So that is a benefit for for us if we can kind of keep that as Stuart said earlier on that we don't open our beat mentality. If we can keep going with mm-hmm. that, it's hopefully only going to take us in one the one direction. You know? I mean if, this is going to stick in my throat, but you've got to take it out off that don't fairman. Look at the defensive record that they've got just yeah. now. And that's I think largely down to that big Benedictus who nearly signed for us um, before he went to the Um So hats off. But their, their squad is paper thin. I mean, they had one injury. Edwards got injured on Saturday and carried off. But, you know, they were saying that he, he walked out of the stadium, so he'll probably be okay for this weekend. But, you know, I'm not saying I wish injury on any player. Um, however, if it does happen, we have to take advantage of it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the other thing, uh, Donald has weighed in, our statistician has, uh, Falkirk are the only team in Britain's senior leagues to have won every game they've played in this calendar year so far. There you go. That's a nice start, isn't it? So, that is a nice start. He also clarifies that with saying the old firm drew in January and Burnley drew a cup, t- drew in a cup tie. So uh, that's the clarification on that one. So we there need to keep go. that going this week then. We've got two. two exactly. Big, two big two games. Big Let's keep that going. Um, shall we hear from the manager, John McGowan? John, we've uh, played Kelty twice before. It was two results that we'll, we'll say a lot, not a lot about. But how much is today uh, showing the progression that your team continues to make? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we had to dig in today. Again, we had to battle for each other. It was never going to be a brilliant game. You know, it was a scrappy game. I think the pitch here being so tight, so narrow, it lends itself to that. that You didn't really get an awful lot of time in the ball to compose yourself and make passes. So, in the conditions, the wind and the the, the rain were obviously going to make it more difficult. So, not a great game of football, but one where you've got to try and find a way to win. And we did. And that is, again, like we mentioned after uh, the Alloa game, so important that we have, we've been able to do that, you know, and today was massive to come back from being 1-0 down at half time and to show the character and the spirit and everyone, the guys coming off the bench and going and doing a shift and uh, contributing massively to, to us winning the game. It just speaks volumes for what we've got in the dressing room, everyone now, and that's the, that's the biggest thing we can take on the spirit, the camaraderie, everyone working for each other right to the end and uh, I'm absolutely delighted, myself and Paul, we're absolutely delighted with that that we're showing that, that side of us again, you know. Maybe early in the season, maybe we would have succumbed and, and, and lost that, that game, but we've, we've stuck to it. I thought the first half, we started really, really well, opening period, really, really well. And then uh, Paige has got to make a safe for a header, and um, he had a couple of other, you know, he stepped over the bar, and we've had a couple of chances at the other end. Kai's had an opportunity, we don't know if it was over line or not, but we are claiming at the time it was over line, don't know if it was. Uh, but then we go behind to a corner kick and we go 1-0 down uh, but not a lot in the first half you know it was uh, as I say a scrappy game both teams had their opportunities about the second half I thought we dominated the second period completely and I think overall just about deserved to take all three points Wow, short and sweet from John McGuinn this week and McGuinn watch it was only two minutes Ross he must have had a night out planned on... Uh, he must have been, I can't be asked for you, Lewis. Just get him. I'm, 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 I've got the Chinese waiting in the house for me today. <laughs> Mass Singer's on the telly. Come on, Lewis. I'm up well, there. as a Mass Singer fan, as we know. Yeah, exactly. But um, I, um, the big thing he, he wanted to push in, in the chat there was the character and the spirit of the side, which I think when you see wins like that, on Saturday, and you've seen it throughout the season, and you've seen the interviews with the players, it's something that... I really think it's just been missing from the club since the days of Peter Houston. Um, and just that character and that spirit. And it's so important to a team. And you just, you know, you d- don't underestimate that importance. You might have the greatest team going out there in the world, but if you don't have that character and spirit, you're never going to come down from 1-0 in a situation like that. And I think that that's just been, you know, it's it shone throughout the season um, and just been so important to Falkirk. So long may that continue. Yes, open, bud. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right, so John, very happy uh, about the result, especially from pulling it back from a losing position. Let's see what the supporters had to say this week, and we'll kick off with X Ali, X Ollie. Um, the photos of the players at the end say it all, a vital three points, a bogey team beating and a great boost. The luxury of replacing three important players with another three fresh keen front men shows great signings by McGlynn, echoing what Stuart said earlier on, really. 
absolutely, yeah, uh, and that absolutely spot on. It's uh, what a difference it is not having to rely on kids or um, players you just know are not going to make any difference coming on. Absolutely, uh, Stuart says not not. Stuart in our company just now, but Stuart says big win, but we do seem to be relying on the subs to get us the results these days. I would like to see us starting with a more natural striker than Oliver. There they go, the age-old question. Um, we'll see what happens at Ali. Uh, Ali says, what has McGlynn got to do not to be criticised for not starting Burrow? Fans using this as an opportunity to have a go at him mental. Trust a man to get it right. It means having to change at mid-game. So be it. It's working. Great win. Six in the bounce. Love it. Fair play to Ali, yep. Uh, Donald says, great fighting spirit from the team. Could have been two down. Thought Kelty had a decent shout for a penalty. Mm -hmm. Jordan Allen's goal showed exactly why we signed him. Reminds me of John Baird. But Burrow's goal was brilliant. He scores every game and was an assist for the first as well. Yep. Uh, David Dunfermline have back-to-backs against Erdry home and away. If we pile on the pressure with three points against Alwa, it's squeaky bum time for them. Game on. Um, just looking at the next run of fixtures, actually, um, Dunfermline, like pointed out there, Erdry away, Erdry at home, then they've got Queen of the South away, which I think... That'll be a tough game as well. That'll yeah. Be a tough game as well. Then they've got Aloha at home, who again might still be trying to push in for that playoff. And then they've got Peter Head away, who again are fighting that relegation front. So that's their next five. In comparison, our next five, we've got Aloha obviously away, which is tough. Then we've got the Scottish Cup game in the week back to the stadium. Eventually, it feels like ages since we've been to the stadium. Uh, we've got Aloha there. Then we've got Airdrie away, but then we've got Peter Head at home. And then Montrose away. Looking at those fixtures, I certainly would prefer our next five as, as opposed to their next five. I think so I would tough one. I think yeah. we've got the same run in overall. I think they've even got more home games than us, but between now and the end of the season, I think our last game of the season is away to Peterhead. That's right. Um, yeah. isn't, Christ, I mean Peterhead in the summer. Uh, if it's a decider, can you imagine that? Imagine the state of the place. <laughs> They'll have to bring in the Norwegian <laughs> police. <you know? laughs> <laughs> Shit, cops and Shetland ponies. I don't know. It'll be um, it'll be a nightmare. It'd be, oh, be brilliant. It would be tremendous. It would be. Tremendous, it? It would be. Yeah. 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 Be yeah. Nice. So we'll see, we'll see. But yeah, no, it's, it'll be interesting. It's going to be certainly. It's not done and dusted, and it's certainly going to be an interesting run, especially if we pile on the pressure against that one. I just think. It to yeah, two. I think, as you say, John, if we can get a win tomorrow night, and it puts it to, um, even if it's temporary. That they'll they'll be starting to twitch a little bit. They will they'll start to start twitching. Um, Jim says been a long time since we won a crucial game when we played poorly, which you have to do to win leagues. Shout out to the ref who booked numerous fifers for various indiscretions and for missing that stonewall pen. <laughs> the mics actually the, the refs actually getting uh, thumbs up this week for the yeah. football. What I believe there was a bit of a stramash at the. I mean. With the bench at the end, someone Lewis um sort of tipped it off saying there was a bit of a stramash on the Kelty bench at the end. I think they were fighting amongst themselves, according to Lewis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. Excellent. Good. Good. Excellent. Excellent. John Potter's an absolute wanker anyway, and I've never forgiven him for Andy Laurie. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? yeah. This is true. Yeah. This is true. But, I mean, it, it, it's a John Potter team. They play like he played as a player, which sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. But yeah, it might be the truck. As I said at the start, there's so many experienced players, many of whom are hotheads. So yes. it's clear that, you know, whether or not he's got the dressing rooms on thing, but he certainly doesn't have the discipline of his own players. I, I like to see it. I like to see dis him. Disagreeing with his own decisions. And that's yeah. about, insubordination is not on. Totally, totally. And there was that bit in the middle of the game, as I remember when McGinn and uh, Higginbottom came to uh, head to head, and then you just saw McGinn ruffle his hair, which you know would have annoyed Higginbottom. <laughs> Love and that. actually... Higginbottom, that's the kind of moment Higginbottom would just go like Red Ross and just freak out and melt someone. So it, it didn't work because he never got sent off on Saturday. But one I of love the Steve well. McGinn for that. Absolutely loved him doing that. Um, Bob says, uh, great show of cats come back from being 1 0 down. Subs were bold, but great to see the new number nine back in a goal. Terrible performance from the officials again, though, no, disagreeing. Um, did anyone else see Higginbottom trying to headbutt McGinn in the first half? There you go. That's that. Yeah. 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 
Uh, Ryan says the tables have turned, grinding out a result after being awful for the first 60 minutes. Burrell must start Tuesday, says Ryan. So that again. Um, Alexander, after the first Kelty goal, thought it was going to be the same way as the last time. Austin Ackerman's diving tactics didn't work, thankfully. Scenes when the goals went in, though, absolutely buzzing, especially when Henderson ran over to celebrate with the fans. Love like it. Love him. Love him. Love him. Um, Sam's got in touch now. If, if people remember, Sam got in touch a, a couple of podcasts back. Yeah. Um, he's uh, we're unbeaten um, since the, the birth of his uh, his little one. So he says that's now six in a row since the wee one was born. Yesterday showed the depth in the squad to be able to completely change the game. Again, w- the winning mentality showing through big time. A team full of belief in themselves just now. Win on Tuesday now to put serious pressure on that lot. Absolutely. Scott, we all know that's a game we would have lost heavily in previous seasons as we've talked about. Fantastic dig from everyone to turn this around. Come on, you Bairns. Love it. Cal says, what a comeback, Jordan Halland. Alan, it was good when he <laughs> see what he's done there. <laughs> yeah, it was good when he came last time. We won six in a row. We won the league. And Callum Higginbottom, <laughs> you're a wee prick. Terrible officials again. <laughs> Love that. And finally, Jamie, who, our man in the States, who named his goats, uh, Callum and Gary, uh, after the, the goal scores last week, says, great result yesterday, the 90 minutes are there, use them all, and never lose faith, and John Sums were spot on. Gary and Callum, the goats, approve. Love it. So there we go. Um, I, I think Jamie's got some more animals in the way, so hopefully we keep this uh, run going of naming the animals after Falkirk scorers. I'd really want a cow called Ramarn. That's what I would like. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll wait and see what Jamie comes up with next. So I've been mean, looking at the table, obviously five points in it now between us and Dunfermline, as it was, but as we said, that possibly goes to two um, come tomorrow night, but fingers crossed, fingers crossed for that one. All right, okay, Falkirk Daft rated player, who are we going for, Ross? Do you know, I'm going to give the rated award to John McGlynn for the subs. Tremendous. Excellent. Um, Stuart? I think for Saturday, I like McCann. I thought he was belting up and down that left wing all day and putting that, that cross for Rumar, so Leon McCann. Yeah, I will throw my hat into the ring and I'm just going to give it to Burrow for assisting a goal and just that goal, really. So I'm going to give it to, to Burrow and uh, adding to the Burrow collection. Copyright of Falkirk Daft, not Falkirk FC, by the way. Yes. Um, right. So uh, that is what we have. We've got a Falkirk Dafty for the week. Do we'll just I... give it to Calm Higginbottom for being a prick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Calm Higginbottom. Yeah. Happy with that. There we go. Calm Higginbottom. You're a prick. Uh, yeah. So there we go. That's your Falkirk Daft Day for the week. Um, Stuart, listen, thank you so much for coming on and looking back at, at the game. Um, and again, reiterate my thanks for, for doing what you do at the Falkirk Supporters Society. It's been so important to the club. Um, what do you think going forward... Is there anything more that, that can happen at the club and, and at the Falkirk Support Society to, to take it forward? I, I think we've only just started, to be honest. I mean, if you look at what has happened this season, um, to take a wee step back, uh, what an incredible turnaround we've seen. You know, from, you know, the AGM paper just came up. We lost £1.2 million last season. £1.2 million. Never lost that in an early puff before, right? It was also our second worst season in history. You know, only I think it was 76, 77 or 77, 78 was a worse season than this. So that that could have been an extinction level event for this club last season, right? But it's not, um, that, that's no exaggeration. This season, what we've seen, it's the best team on the pitch since, at least since Houston's been up in the season, maybe before that, right? Um, you know, we, we, we've turned the financial deficit from 1.2 million to 400,000, and now down as we saw in the AGM papers to under 150 grand, the uh, soft loans had to be put forward. And even they might be wiped out if we get a decent, you know, cut front. We could be double, fingers crossed. Uh, all that sort of stuff. We've seen the incredible commercial performance by the two Grahams. And the amount of, everything's getting sponsored. You know, I, I'm scared to stand still in the stadium in case I get sponsored. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, um, that, that's brilliant. You know, I mean, it's what they're doing. And the fans are coming through. The, the fans are believing in it. You know, up to 4,000 every week in the division, for God's sake. You know, look, we're, we're, we're absolutely motoring. 
that I, but it has to keep going. You know, the, whether or not we go up, still don't know yet. I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm, I'm less than until we're there. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna take anything for granted. But we can see what, what happens if you just get that break. Look at Queen's Park and Air, right up at the very top of that championship. We would have had a right good go at that championship with this team, I think. So that, that's what's going really well. But we need to stick at it. All the fans need to stick at it. If you can join FSS, do it. If you can join the patrons, please do it. Whatever you can do, please do it. I think, though, what it shows you, the amount of people that come through the door, shows you the potential at this club and this community that we've got. I mean, Falkland Football Club's been the, the town's top soft power attraction for you know, since the late Victorian era, right? You know, since since the 1870s. It's, it's brought recognition, it's brought renowned jobs and investment and has the foremost community foundation in Scotland. This club is a big deal for thousands and thousands of people across across the place. I mean, the area has exciting times coming up. You, you know, you've got the investment, uh, the growth deal, you've got the green free ports, which will bring hundreds of millions into the area. You've got multi-billion pound companies on our doorstep, on our doorstep, right? So, and, and the stadium itself is next to the Kelpies, one of the biggest tourist attractions in, um, in the country. If that isn't potential, then I don't know what is, right? I mean, we know that the biggest drag on Falkland Football Club's resources is the stadium, right? I mean, it's great that we've got the stadium. We had to move from Broadwell. We all miss it. And I saw your picture online, Ross, and shared it here. But we are where we are now, and we've got to make the best of this stadium that we're in. I, I know that people in the council see Falkirk as an asset to the area, right? I mean, we bring the town's name into national media every single week. I was disappointed not to see the stadium in the uh, the list of council-owned properties that were out for community ownership. I know why. It's because they make money off us and they make, you know, they've got offices there. I think, though, the council can show vision. I think I'm calling out to them to do this. Show about a vision. Have a look at the terms and conditions of which Falkland Football Club are there and just unlock some of that potential. I don't know what, what that means. I mean, I know there's a contract and I'm not saying... It's unfair or anything like that. You sign a contract, you see it out. But if the council could take a bit of a deep breath and see what potential they could unlock by giving Falkirk Football Club a little bit of breathing space, right? I don't know what that means. That could mean the top floor, you know, the, where the boardroom is, where all the rooms are. Give it, give it to the club to manage and operate and make a bit of money off. Drop, you know, drop the the rent that we have to pay, at least we're in the, when we're in the lower leagues, right? Yeah, yeah. That will come back. That will come back um, to the council because if the club can be successful, we can get up another stand. We can get one of these commercial partners, get another stand up, maybe with a hotel in it. I think Mark Campbell suggested that, but let's not go there. You know, we could, and that's near the Kelpies, so there could be something there. You know, we're, we're going to hopefully get a new pitch in quite soon so that we can continue to use it for other professional football clubs like the Shire. You know, but if you just give us that little bit more flex. Um, then we could complete the stadium, the club could do well, and then we could get an academy back, and everything grows. It, it, rice and tide lifts all ships. It's it's very, very possible if people show vision. The council's had its money back from that stadium 10 times over, you know, with the money that the club pays, yeah. the money it makes out of the stadium, and if you look more broadly, the investment that they got from Morrison's. Now, I'm not saying for a second the council's done anything wrong, but they've, they've done everything right, they've been very supportive. But now, show a bit of vision, council, take a deep breath and help the club. Well, we're going to tag them in because that I think they need to they need to hear this, uh, Stuart. And I I completely agree with you. I think the, the the club have done their bit for the council over the years, and yeah, we've we've had it back as well. But they 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 could quite easily give us a little bit of a help to kind of push the club, the town, everything on. God, that's the best feature of person's braveheart. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but no, um, we could. I, I want to say it as a partnership, not a handout. You know, I mean, yeah. the, the club would have to deliver. We'd have to keep working with the community foundation to deliver. I mean, it's the best community foundation in the country that we've got, right? We know that. Um, we've got to continue community ownership. And that means you know fans continue to invest in the club as well. Um, and you know, they, I think the council. I know they're tied up in their own worries with finance just now. It's probably the worst possible time to ask this, but I'd suggest it's the best possible time to think strategically. 
Absolutely. Stuart, here, here, absolutely brilliant. And that is why he is the co-chair of the Falcon Supporters Society, everyone, uh, and he'll be a massive loss. Um, if you want to get involved in the Falcon Supporters Society, just repeat that email address, falconsupporters.org. All the details up there. We'll tag it on the episode bio, so you'll see that all below as well. Stuart, it's been an absolute delight to have you once again on Falcon Dab, and like I say, you'll be sorely missed at the Falcon Supporters Society, but you'll be about anyway. I'm still putting your, your own in, I'm sure. Okay, you'll see me bouncing about again, so. Absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant. If you want to be a guest pundit list, just like Stuart has been, please drop us a DM, get us on our socials, or you can email falkirkdavpod at gmail.com. This is Falkirk Daft. Every week on Falkirk Daft, we like to look ahead to our next opponents, and there's two opponents to look forward to uh, this week, Ross. No doubt by the time people are hearing this, because we're playing on the Tuesday night and we're recording on the Monday, the Alloa game will have been and gone. But we'll look briefly at Alloa before getting our teeth into the Darvel game in the Scottish Cup with Mick Kennedy, the Darvel manager. Alloa, first of all, Tuesday night, Ross has been, the, the rally cry has been sent out with Ross in the Falkirk Daft Twitter. You're what to fill this away end, aren't you, on Tuesday? I, I think we can. See, after Saturday, I think, uh, like, there was a good crowd through for the Cup game, but I actually think. And I know it's a midweek game and it doesn't suit everybody, but I think there'll be a right big Falkirk crowd tomorrow night. Um, and we could be doing it as well because Alloa's going to give us a tough game, I reckon. They uh, certainly are. They're in really, really good form. Three wins in the last six, Ross. Only one loss in there as well. Um, Rice is getting a, a good tune out of Alloa um, this season. They've really come into it. I mean, that's them sitting fourth in the table now, one of the form teams in the league. Um <sighs> What? Sorry, they're sitting fifth, but in terms of form, sorry, that's what I meant. They're, they're fourth. Uh, what have you made of Alloa this season, Ross? Um, it's a tale of a couple of games, to be honest, John. Because obviously the home game, we just we disposed of them really, really quite comfortably, to be honest. But that mm. that most recent cup game uh, tough. wasn't wasn't pretty. It was tough. Yeah, it was. And obviously they they went one 0 up and. They had chances. It could have been worse than that, to be honest. Obviously, we got an equaliser, thankfully, before half time, and then we kicked on. But they had their chances, and they'll be up for this again. As you said, table wise, it's really, really tight up there. So I think they'll be well, well up for this, and uh, we need to be up for it as well. But and you just hope there's not going to be a small hangover from Saturday. You know what it's like? See, when you get a big win or a big last minute moment you just you worry don't you that it next yeah. is maybe just and especially more. the fact that john mcgon just been given manager of the month and cal morrison just had player of the month as well yeah. it's usually a jinx moment isn't it so they're, they're usually i mean i'll you know they're looking to get into that playoffs i mean you know when you look at airdrie edinburgh montrose queen of the south are going uh, by the way mark my words queen of the south will be there thereabouts for the playoffs as well i think i think marvin bartley I certainly know, was yeah they, but they've 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 won their last two games since they took over, haven't they? So, yeah, it's, it's, it's shaping up to be a real, real tight end of season. I just, I just hope we're top and we don't care about anyone else below us. That's that's kind of a goal. <laughs> No, exactly. I mean, uh, Alo had that win there at the weekend. Again, Connor Salmon doing a great job over at the Rex. 13 goals for the season. Yeah, no, he's, he is doing well and he's a menace. Um, he looks fitter. I know we talked about this just recently because obviously we've played them about 18 times in the last <laughs> couple of months. But um, he, he looks leaner, he looks fitter. Um, granted, I don't know if you saw their goal, his goal on Saturday. Um, it was a defensive cock-up by Peter Head. They must have squaffed at this uh, clearance about five times and then he literally just had to roll into the net. But he's still putting the ball in the net and um, he'll be a menace on Tuesday night as well. Yeah, he always he always likes it against Falkirk. You know, I, I think in the last game though, I think we dealt with them all right. I think we dealt. And I think with Brad um, being in there, you know, he, he likes a good physic, you know, a good physical battle, and certainly Connor will give him one. But yeah. you know, I think I think Brad will, will definitely be up for it as well. All right, then we've played them so many times. It just feels like every week we're going to be talking about Alan next week as well. It's like <laughs> God Almighty. Uh, right, okay. So without talking further about Alan, what do you think the score's going to be tomorrow night? It's so whether I move from my any win will do mantra to be honest, because that seems to be working. But um, I think that, I think it'll be I think there'll be a few goals. I know I said this like the cup tie. I'm going to I'm going to go two one again. Two one. Okay. 2-1 I'm, 
Well, I mean, the thing is with Falk at the last few games, it's actually since the Alloy game, we weren't any great against them. We weren't tremendous at Edinburgh. We were oh, kind of all right. Again, at the weekend, we, you know, until the last 10 minutes, we, that's when we really came into our own. But yeah, I think I'm just going to take a 1 0 and again up the road, 1 0 up the road for the Rex. And I think that'll do us. But uh, fingers crossed, uh, midweek game under the floodlights, always a good spectacle. So fingers crossed, like Ross says, take a good crowd up there and then we hopefully do them. And, um, you know, if the thing is, Ross, I mean, when you start looking at it, you know, we get three points there. Then Fenwin, then are like, oh, there's only, two it's points. a psychological thing. There's two points in it. Your next two games are Airdrie home and away. And Airdrie's that... on a far, far more consistent run than they were. Granted, we've got to play them soon as well. But that's two games against Airdrie they've got coming up. And I don't think that's a gimme. They'll win both of them. No, absolutely. Absolutely. So we'll see how it goes tomorrow night. Um, I've got another big game to talk about. Uh, on Monday, it's happening. Um, we're still in the Scottish Cup and we have a wee tie away to Darvel. And I'm delighted to say on Falkirk Daft, we're joined by the Darvel manager, Mick Kennedy. How are you doing, Mick? I'm good, lads. How are you? Very well, very well. Thanks for thank you very much. Uh, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate your time because, as I was saying, Mick, you're one of the busiest managers in Scottish football. You're doing more press conferences than Ange and uh, Michael Beale at the moment, mate. Yeah, there's loads going on. I've got, I've got another bit, few bits and pieces to do this week. To be fair, so I then after that, hopefully, it's it was done. Taking it in your stride, all this new media uh, commitment, so Mick, no bother at all. I listen, I think I think these things only come when things are going well and it's a positive. So I think you just need to accept that and listen, it's a bit unusual in terms of my sort of normal week to week in terms of football and stuff like that. But I listen, happy to be part of it, obviously because we had a very positive result in the last round. So I so that, I mean, that's not, the best. And it's not just the cut, Mick, Darvel absolutely flying at the moment. There was another five 0 victory against the Urban Meadow at the weekend. Um I th- has it all just come together this season? What what's been the key to the success at Darvel this season? No, I, I, I think I've been at the club now. This is now my third sort of season. So each, each year's been a successful season in terms of what we've always been trying to build and put in place. So no, it's it's been year on year we've, we've been fortunate enough, we've been successful. Obviously, the last sort of round of the senior Scottish Cup brought a lot of attention. I think uh, Probably at a full level, but I think at a level it's been recognised that we've, we've been successful and we've been obviously building something. And uh, from a football perspective, it's been really positive. It's been going. It's been really successful. So, but I think just beating Aberdeen just brought that attention to a sort of wider audience. I mean, the, the, the victory obviously against our uh, Aberdeen biggest. You know, we're, everyone. I, I think it has to go down as the biggest shock in, in Scottish history. Wasn't it a shock to you though, Mike? No, it, it wasn't. I, I think from uh, day one, I, I honestly believed it we could win the cup tie. Uh, so no, I wasn't shocked in the slightest. I think it was just about me trying to transfer that belief into the group. Uh, and obviously, you want the fans to believe, but probably, let's be honest, most of them coming out of the ground that night didn't expect us to win the game. But as the game developed and grew, then I think that belief slowly but, uh, slowly but surely spread through the crowd Then obviously then transcends onto the pitch as well because there's... Everybody then gets to the point where you actually go, we can actually win this. And I, I think that sort of carried us over the line in the end. Mag, see the, um, I don't know, you won't have seen the, the, the episode of this podcast prior to your cut tie with Aberdeen, but I actually backed you for a win that night. John said, no, there's no chance. Everybody said, no, there's no chance. I came on the next week saying, I told you, I told you. And do you know, I don't know what it was. I, I had this feeling Aberdeen are obviously, I know they're going through a, a right rough patch. Um, just now as well, but from what I'd seen of yourselves, you beat Montrose, and Montrose are a tough team as well. So that was kind of where my head was at that night. And then we're sitting watching it, and I, I messaged John uh, when we saw your team talk, and we're sitting going, "All oh, right, this is this is this is going to get this is going to get dangerous here." <laughs> and because like even obviously I'm sitting going, oh, I, guess, "I think Darvel will get through." After your team talk, I was I was that inspired. I just wanted to come in. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, the team talk, Mick. You've got, you've, you've set the bar now. How are you going to beat it for the Falkirk game? See, to be fair, lads, I, I, I think if you speak to any of the players, that's the way we sp- I speak all the time, eh? So it's, yeah. it's probably not an unusual. I think it just maybe because of the cameras in there, and then loads of people have asked me who have sort of been out with the club. Like, is, is was that sort of built up or set up for? Was it specifically designed for, for because the cameras were in the changing room? It wasn't that, as I say, that's the way I speak every week. That's my team talks, and 
most weeks. Uh, obviously, they're slightly different. They're built on the same values, same ethos. But no, I think the players are used to listening to me speak like that. I think just for the first time, obviously, it's opened up to a wider audience. And obviously, then everybody then sort of the, the attention becomes on the back of it. Yeah. Do you think, Mick, you know, Aberdeen, obviously, Ross mentioned there, the kind of trouble they're in at the moment. Obviously, Darvel going really well in um, the league at the moment. Falkirk going really well in the league. Do you think that's almost like a tougher task then because both teams are going so well? Oh, listen, I, I think even with that, I think it's a tougher task. I think, listen, and I certainly don't believe for one minute Jim or the group were, were disrespectful to us, but I, I, I'm sure I'm sure there wouldn't have been an Aberdeen player travelling down to Darvel thinking they were going to get put in the cup that night. Yeah. Uh, I think, from a Falkirk perspective, I think there'll be players in the group, and I think John himself, I think they'll be a lot more aware of us, and I think, I think respectful is the wrong word, so I don't think that Aberdeen was respectful, but I think they're a lot more cautious and co- conscious of, obviously, the players we've got, the group we've got, how well we're doing. Uh, so I think it'll be harder to cup tie in, in, in many levels, to be honest with you. Yeah, um, you've obviously had Falkirk watched, uh, presumably, Mick. Um, I believe you're going to the Alloy game uh, on Tuesday night as well. What have you made of Falkirk? Uh, listen, I, I think John's pretty renowned himself for playing a sort of possession based style. Uh, so I think that's obviously one of the reasons brought in. So, uh, listen, I think they've got a very good squad, loads of, loads of legs and energy, and it's particularly in the wide areas of Morrison and Kennedy. Then obviously Stevens in the middle of the pitch, he's a bit more experienced and stuff like that. So I think it's a very well balanced group. Uh, looks like he's in contention. Obviously, trying to get promoted this year. Obviously, with them filming. So, I I think we'll be, we'll be very very respectful of obviously the squad and I know some of the players in the group as well. So, no, I think they're all very aware of the quality Falkirk possess. Uh, another full time team as well. So, no, I think they're all aware how difficult a task it will be. I think it's I think it's set up to be an absolute brilliant cup tie. To be honest with you, Mick, and obviously with being on TV, I, I think it would have been a sellout anyway. But with the fact that it's on TV, it's just that extra bit of edge. Um, to the game as well. You, you mentioned obviously um, knowing the players. There's a couple ex Falkirk boys uh, at Darvel as well. So uh, Ian McShane uh, one. He was obviously probably not the best time for him to come to Falkirk because we, we weren't doing too great at the time there. But uh, and in uh, a recent signing at the weekend as well. I obviously I, th- I think he's maybe got a point to prove or two. To be honest with you, I think. Uh... To be fair, when I speak to him about his time at Falkirk, I think he, he speaks very highly of the club and the fans and stuff like that. I just, I think he feels as if he really didn't get a fair crack of the whip, to be honest with you. Maybe the system didn't suit me at that point at the time. So I think he feels as if he's probably got a wee bit unfinished business. And then obviously Robbie... Don't say that. Don't then, say that. <laughs> <laughs> then I think Robbie coming in at the weekend as well. So I, I think even within the group, loads of the boys have played at that level. Loads of the boys yeah. know... A few of the boys in the Falkirk squad as well, so I, I think everybody's f- uh, fairly aware of the quality within each of the teams. So I, th- I think it was a really good cup tie because I think from a football perspective, I said this: John's obviously got a philosophy as well to try and dominate possession. I think anybody who watches us is, will see we've got a clear philosophy as well in terms of building from the back and trying to control the game, possession the ball. And that. So I think it will actually be a really good football spectacle. So uh, I'm actually looking forward to that in itself. Yeah, um, without giving away your secrets, Mick, is there any kind of Falkirk players you identified as, as real threats? I, I I think it's clearly evident, probably in the wider areas is probably where a lot of the threat comes from. I think really two dynamic wide players. Uh, I think the difference will be is probably, I was listening to John's interview after the game on Saturday, he spoke about the challenges of trying to control and dominate the game in Kelty because of the size of the pitch. And our pitch will be probably similar to the size of Kelties, I would imagine, at the weekend as well. So the dynamics of the pitch will be slightly different from what the guys are used to, used to at Broad, Broadway, uh, sorry, at Falkirk Stadium. So I think I think that's m- probably help us and aid us a little bit. Uh, so, but aye, I think the wide men are, will be very, very aware of their qualities and their attributes. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned the pitch there. It's like an absolute bowling green, eh, Mick. Um, everyone's commented on that. I mean, is is that been a big part of the Darvel success? You think? I, I think I think when I went to the club originally and obviously we, we, we put some kind of plan in place on the pitch and off the pitch in terms of what we wanted to achieve and I said listen for me really to, to, to play the style of football I want to play as I need, you need to I need a top surface and to be fair the club they're back because they put a brand new pitch in irrigation system and that's a really high spec one of, as you've probably seen one of the best in the country if you yeah. look at but mid-January and stuff like that you look at the condition it's in so no there's been a lot of investment in the pitch but we need that to be fair because of the style of play we, in the way we play, I think anybody who watched against Aberdeen 
we've seen that we try and get the ball down, we try and dominate possession. So the surface needs to be good. So certainly the lads will enjoy, I know you play on a 4G, and, but the lads will enjoy the surface. I don't think there'll be any issues with that. Yeah, certainly will do. Certainly will do. Um, so, I, I mean, I've got to ask for your prediction here, Mick, but I guess you're not going to give me, you, you won't give me a prediction, but go for it. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? How's the game going to go? I don't know. I, I, I think it'll be two very similar styles, to be fair. So it'll be interesting to see who can really get control of the game. Yeah. Uh, that, that'll be an interesting thing. Listen, I fully believe we can win, win the tie. I think if, if I believe we can beat Controls and beat Aberdeen, then the reality is I need to have yeah. that same belief. Uh, I think, to be honest with you, I, I probably take more out of how we played against Montrose in terms of playing against Falkirk than I would against Aberdeen, to be fair. Yeah, so that's interesting, listen, yeah. We dominated last parts of that game, obviously, won 5-2. I, I certainly don't expect us to win by five goals or anything like that. I'd score five goals on Monday. I think it'll be highly competitive. I think it'll just be whatever team can really impose herself on the game. I don't think any's are really set up to sit in and defend and try and see no. the game out. So I think it'll be two really at- attacking styles two very similar philosophies in terms of dominating possession of the game. So it'll just be who really probably turns up on the day and can impose herself in the game in terms of what players with the standards they can get to. Mick, I think you made a good point about the pitch as well, because obviously, as you would have seen uh, and from John's interview as well, the Kelty pitch is, is really, really tight. Now, I, I've obviously not been down to Darvo before. I'll, I'll have that pleasure next week. But So is the pitch really, really, is it as minimum as it? <laughs> No, it, it, it's it's probably one of the largest at all level. It's, it's, right. it's a pretty big pitch, to be fair. I don't think it's the size of Falkirk's pitch, to be fair, right. looking at the dynamics okay. of that. So, yeah. But it, it might be slightly bigger than Kelty's, but not much. So it'll be okay. a similar, I'm sure the dynamics will be a similar size. So, yeah. But that's, again, from your bit, sometimes it helps us and sometimes it, it goes mm. against us because obviously the more space you've got in terms of rotation and stuff like that, it's easy to control and dominate possession. So, but, but, uh, I mean, the main thing for me is the surface is really good, and that's the most important thing. But it will be a similar size to Kelty. Yeah. And, no, but listen, no. I, I'm sure J- John will be well prepared for that anyway. I know John was doing it the game last Wednesday night, I believe. Uh, right, so okay. I, I'm yeah, sure I he can do it as a good look. It from we've had John and Paul, and we know how intense he is, so we, we don't doubt it. He's probably watched about four, four or five games <laughs> that you've had on uh, on YouTube and stuff as well. But um, no, the reason I was going, the reason I was asking about that is because obviously we had to really change our style on Saturday when it wasn't working, and you're a, you're a goal down, it's a tight pitch, and Falkirk then went a lot more kind of bodies forward rather than the one up front or one slash three up front that we normally do. So it'll be interesting to see if we have to go, if he does from that from the off on Monday, if that makes sense. I know, I listened to John's interview and obviously I've seen he was, he was asked the question about changing his shape a couple of times in the game and obviously he probably went, I think he went three at the back, he went two direct strikers up top, but listen, fundamentally it got him the result at the end of the day, so it obviously worked. Uh, but I, 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 don't, I, I don't think he'll need to, but, but he might do that, but I think he'll try and... Uh, Listen, we, we, we are certainly MD who sees us. We are very expansive. We're very open. We're not renowned for sitting in yeah. <laughs> in any game. So, I mean, we'll certainly have a proper go. I don't, certainly in terms of your plan and preparation, there'll, be, there'll, there'll no be discussion at any point. I've been trying to sit in and be difficult to beat. I mean, we'll go and try and take the game to Falkirk and pose ourselves in the game as much as we can. So, I don't think they'll maybe maybe in Saturday there is a game developed. Maybe Kelty started to get a wee bit deeper. I think he's controlled last parts of possession, and maybe then he had to be a wee bit more direct. But I think yeah. Monday will be able to conducive to probably mm-hmm. playing his usual style, usual shape, and similar for us. I mean, it should be an absolute cracking game of football, and you know, both me and Ross looking forward. To it. I'm sure you're looking forward to it as well, Mick. Well, see, it, as well as being Darrell manager, I've got to touch on this. So you're the owner of Black Rooster, and the big question mm-hmm. is, Mick, when's our Black Rooster coming to Falkirk? <laughs> <laughs> but actually, I was funny, I was in a meeting today and we were speaking about that, there's one not far away. Uh, I've actually spoke to the commercial team a couple of times about doing a bit of sponsorship. I've just bought a, prior to this draw, I bought a table at your speakers night and stuff like we, that. We did, so, we uh, did hear that rumour, Mick, we did hear yeah, that rumour. Yeah, we did. So the problem is if we get, it's getting cancelled. <laughs> 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 uh, but so I so I, I I'll come along to that hopefully uh, if I'm allowed in that if we win that. Well, that's the thing because if you do <laughs> win then maybe maybe Falkirk will cancel your table. I surely have, <laughs> surely have a, a wee bit of gloating when the night of a win. Uh, so I so I'm going to come along to that. So I l- yeah. listen. It, it's it's I, I'm very aware. I, I was speaking about this last night to the staff. Like I, I, I said to you as well, John. Uh, that I'm aware of Falkirk when my 
best mates, is James Allen, who's the lead singer of Las Vegas. James oh, played for Falkirk. Brilliant, yeah. When, yeah. when, when we, we left school. So I used to come through when Alec Top was a manager, when James was in the youth team and started breaking the first team, we used to come and watch Falkirk loads of times. So I, I'm very aware of the history and size and tradition of the club, a club that probably deserves to be back in the Premier League. Uh, so out, probably out with this game on Monday then, I actually hope that John gets promoted and you can kick on and get probably back to where the club belongs. Yeah. Ah, brilliant. Well, listen, Mick, um, really looking forward to the game on Monday. Uh, we, we, I'd love to say best luck, but I'll not, I'll not mean it at all. Uh, I understand. It should be a great game of football, obviously on the telly for the world to see as well. So um, we'll see you Monday and, and fingers crossed for a good game. See you Monday, mate, everyone. I'm sure I'll be back in contact with you. I'm sure you will, Mick. Yeah. Sure, so right, Mick, thank you. All the best. Take care, guys. Thanks for your time. This is Falkirk Daft. So let's put a bow on that one, Ross. Busy, busy, busy. Um, loving Stuart's chat, especially when we got into the council, and loving obviously talking about the Kelty game as well. Mick uh, Kennedy, Darvel manager, just makes you excited about that game on Monday, doesn't it? I think he's right. I think it is going to be a belter of a game. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. Obviously, selfishly, I just I hope it's a belter of a game that we win. Like I don't want it to be a belter of a game and we're the the next Aberdeen and oh, oh just just, and just dread that, dread well, that. That is what I dread because we've been there before, haven't we? Over the like on occasion over the years where the the, the cup upset and stuff like that. But um, oh, I just want to win and I I want to get through and like I know people are saying oh. Let's let's get the old firm. I don't I don't want the old firm. I don't want, I, like I know I know one we, game away from Hamden. I know one game away from Hamden. Like, I just want whoever we can get that's a chance of getting through. And obviously we need to beat Darvel, right? So that's the that's the far that's task one. We need to beat Darvel. I hope we've got it. I think we've got it enough us. In, I think we've got the mentality. As as we've seen to Mick, I think it's a different proposition when there's two teams that are going well. Aberdeen, as we know, are have been having a terrible, terrible time of it. Yeah. But when two teams like Darvo are going well in the league, Falk are going well, it's it's a different proposition, you know. Yeah. I just hope it's that whole thing of they've had their moment in the sun and you've seen it so many times. Falker could be there as well. You've had your moment in the sun and then you blow it in the next game. So I'm just kind of hoping that's going to be the case. Yeah, no, it goes. was it was great to have him on though. And um, what's that? Well, obviously, we have, we have John and Paul on earlier in the season, but just absolutely a brilliant to have a, a manager on. And um, you obviously, every week we get our guest from the other team on and it's it's fine but that's a different element when you're actually speaking to the man that's going to like yeah, that's his job to to get one over in you rather than yeah. hoping that we're going to get one over in them you know great great insight into, into that and uh, we will we'll say as well next week's show will be delayed it won't be out on the Monday night because we'll have the Davo game and we want to talk about that so it'll be later on hopefully Tuesday next week for the show because we'll be at the game or watching it on the telly so uh, listen thank you very much for listening to Falker Daft um, we have got look at our Twitter if you want to be involved for the We've got two tickets up for as Mick. Mick's going to be the, at the dinner. Um, yes, indeed. Yes, yeah, so we've got two. Yeah, we've got two tickets uh, donated by the the club for um, the speakers' night on the third of March at the Inshira, which is amazing of them. And um, yeah, we're going to give it away. So all everybody, uh, if you go to our socials on Facebook and Twitter, we're looking for you to follow our social media pages. That's all you need to do. Uh, share or uh, retweet the post depending if it's Facebook or Twitter and um, on next week's um, show we'll pick a winner at random so there you go um, look out for that on our socials and we'll get a winner and remember you can buy merch um, shop.spreadshirt.co.uk forward slash folk dash daft um, and we've got a special Valentine's offer on the way more details on that next week in fact do it now uh, look out for it on our socials because we'll be recording this time next week which will be Valentine's Day and by the way we're going to have to record a show during Valentine's Day how is that going to go down in the household uh, how is it going to go in your household <laughs> right, we'll wait and see, we'll wait and see. but there you go uh, we, will br- we will sacrifice our marriages to bring Falkirk Daft for you that's how committed we are <laughs> um, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, please uh, give us a follow on socials and you can get uh, into the, the prize draw for the dinner as well. Well, uh, that's it for Falcon Daft this week. Two big games. Uh, hopefully, you, you know, you've listened to this now and we'll beat Aloha. 
Um, fingers crossed, and then it's on to Darvel. But yeah, um, looking forward to it, and we'll be there tomorrow night, Ross, giving it yee haw, and then on to Darvel for the Scottish Cup after that. What oh, a week. It's a big week, John, I love it. It's every really week's nice. a big week, every week's a big week. Ah! <sighs> That's it for Falkadav. Until the next time, expect a